this paragraph. It's in brackets and it's after a bolded section that says, add the following if appropriate. I advised the parties yesterday we would be talking about that this morning. I mean, it was just stated that um, the witness doesn't speak very good English. And so that would, that would indicate that it would be a lot more work for the interpreter to make That's sure. That's not that what I'm asking about, sir. I'm asking whether you, whether you have a position on whether I include the very last paragraph of that instruction uh, to the jury. I don't feel like that needs to be read to the jury. Um, I think it's pretty it's pretty clear from the from all the language leading up to that. Let me ask Attorney Basie a question about um, <laughs> the contact the Office of the District Attorney has had with Mr. Marquez. Were you able to communicate at all in any way in English, even if you would describe it as broken English? Yes, I think our last conversation, we probably said, um, I said something in English, he responded, and then when I said something else, I think he needed translation for that. His primary, our victim witness person, um, specialist assigned to the case is bilingual and she speaks to him in Spanish. All right, given that, a bit of information provided by the DA as an officer of the court regarding his ability to answer some, but not most. I think it's uh, appropriate to read the very last paragraph. Um, certainly doesn't hurt. It's not going to take away. So I will read the entirety of jury instruction 60. Obviously, the part that uh, says read here if appropriate comes out. Uh, and then um, I will print that off. And uh, that is what I will read at the appropriate time. Did that print, Madam Clerk? Wait. Quick question on that. Um, how do we know exactly what words uh, the witness will be able to understand in English versus? That's not how the interpretation works. The questions are in English. They're interpreted in Spanish to the witness. The witness will answer, presumably in Spanish. Uh, and then the witness's words will be interpreted in English. And it's the English, as this instruction says, that is the evidence. I think it's a little unfair that uh, prosecution has had conversations with the witness and I haven't considering that it's my witness. They were on the state's witness list as well I believe so um, it's fair for either party to reach out and if witnesses want to talk to either party uh, in preparation that's frankly fair game. So how, how would I be able to reach out to a witness? Uh, Mr. Brooks, you are representing yourself. That uh, obviously poses some challenges and difficulties, but that is the state and stage that we are at. So with that, um, I know uh, we'll get Detective Carpenter on the stand. He can come up and be out here uh, when the jury comes out. Um, so come on up, sir. I will swear you in again, as is my practice when there's a witness on the stand for a second more, day. I have one more thing real quick. Um, well, it needs to be other than subject matter jurisdiction, it's, so what is it? You didn't even let me get to it. I said, what is it? I said, it needs to be something other than subject matter no, jurisdiction. Can I what get is to it? it? You can say. There's no way to know what I'm going to say if I can't say it. Mr. Brooks, please tell me what it is you'd like to address. I, I want to address why my um, ICFs have not been addressed, because I know you have them. Why have I not gotten copies? I've gotten copies of every other ICF. Why not the, the recent ones? Sir, I am not uh, going to be the intermediary anymore for ICFs that are directed to the uh, clerk of court regarding copies. That's not that's not explaining why um, I haven't. I'm even not the been keeper of the if, record. If so if there's something received. you want me to address, then you should address your ICF to me and not the clerk of court. 
well, where is the where is the ICF? If Sir, I sent it, I should I be able not, to get a copy. I've gotten copies of every single one. You need whether to they ask were addressed, for that from the clerk. Whether of they court. were addressed to you or whether they were addressed to the clerk of courts, I've always I'm not going to address told, that further, Mr. Brooks. I'm not going to be the intermediary when so you have the, questions to the clerk of courts. So for what's the point of me sending the ICF, me doing what you asked me to do, and sending them, and then not being able to know if they've even been received and get a copy of them, which I've been getting copies of them ever since. If you did not ask for a copy of the ICF, they don't have any obligation to send I addressed, that I addressed it when I first sent it. I asked you on the record, did you receive it? Mr. Brooks, you said, I didn't receive anything because nothing has been sent to me. Well, so where's the if ICF? there's something that you need, then you should reach back out to the clerk of court. I shouldn't have to do but that if I sent it. We're not going to take up court time regarding an ICF sent to the clerk of court. Again, I will advise you once again, I did this the other day, if there's something case related it needs to be addressed to me if it has to do with the record it needs to go to the clerk of court and it was because it i was am sent not to the clerk of court the but i still uh, should be i still should be able to be told if it was received and get a copy which you've done that before every single icf and i told you so i would no longer be doing that sir because of this very issue it so you said so now time. it changes so now it changes all of a sudden? No, it didn't change all of a sudden, sir, and you know that. So don't no, try to no. confuse Does the Does it record. change all of a suddenly? Because no, I've it, been getting copies of everything I've sent, which is what you asked me to do. This changed last week, and you it know should, that. It shouldn't change. So no, I don't that, know it. I'm bringing the jury out, and I'm not addressing this issue, So sir. I want I want We're the copy of my forward. ICS that I send. Um, send the request to the office. I don't have office. to send another request. Where's the one that I just sent last week? All right, the jury is going to come out, so please be respectful. I, I will, but at the same time, you still have to, I did what you asked me to do. If you tell me to do something and I do it, and then now you're saying I, I'm not going to get a copy, which you've been providing them ever since, I, ever since you told me to do it. Mr. Brooks, the rules on that changed last week. No, no, it did not. I'm still supposed to be able to say if it's been received or not. So why should I have to send multiple ICFs to even know if they, they've been received? That's ridiculous, Your Honor. I'm going to give the parties the uh, final version of jury instruction 60, which I will be reading at the That's, appropriate time. Come on, you can't change stuff at the last minute. You no, asked Mr. me to Brooks, do something. Mr. Brooks, I did it as a courtesy, you and frankly, no, you're not courteous I'm not, to me. I'm not so even, the jury's I'm not even coming out. I'm not even referring to that. The record should reflect that the jury I'm referring is to coming the fact, I'm referring out. to the fact that you right. haven't even Mr. had Brooks, enough respect to tell me it's been received. to the jury. They're coming out. Okay, that doesn't that doesn't uh, mean that you shouldn't be able to tell me if my ICF has been received. ICFs that you told me to submit, you told me that. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will disregard the commentary by Mr. I accept for value point. in return for value this document, just like you've been hiding everything from the jury that they the need to The jury will disregard. The court is not hiding anything from the jury. Yeah, yeah, you are. So, yeah, you Mr. Are. Brooks, please be respectful of the jury. They're and coming you should, out. You should be respectful we of what are, you asked me to do. You are addressing issues that are not related to evidence they in are. this case. You asked me to do Mr. something, Brooks, I'll do it. please. And right. then now it changes. Everyone can be seated. Thank you. This is ridiculous. Just like subject matter jurisdiction hasn't been proved. Just like you're making judicial determinations that you don't have to prove anything by law. <laughs> which is a tacit agreement. By you, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the, please disregard the statements currently Why, being it's made true? by Mr. Brooks. Why? Because it's true. Incorrect statements of the law. They, they are prove not that they are incorrect. Proof. In this case, where's the proof? Where's the legal proof? And you need to disregard them because you don't have it. And we are going to continue proof. with testimony, Mr. Brooks. I warn I don't, you: do I don't, not interrupt. I don't or we identify will by that name. Have a discussion about whether you will continue to be here. I don't All consent right. to being called that name for the record. Detective Carpenter, please stand, as is my practice when a witness is on the stand for a second day to be sworn in again. Go ahead, Teresa. Please I'm raise your right lie hand. lie to the jury. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, God? Yes. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> and just for the record, please state your name for day two. Detective J. Carpenter, J-A-Y-C-A-R-P-E-N-T-E-R. -E -E All right, thank you. Go ahead, you may continue. Sir, yesterday when we ended for the day, um, we were at the point where we were talking about you interviewing the defendant, Daryl Brooks, um, on November 21st, 2021, <coughs> at approximately 11 o'clock p.m. Do you recall that? Objection, I don't think being called that name, for the record. Uh, objection is overruled. Yes, I do Grounds recall that. overruled. Not relevant. 
Yeah, it is relevant. Your Honor, at this point, or I think last night, we asked for um, State's Exhibit 81 to be admitted into evidence, which is the defendant's statement provided to Detective Carpenter and Detective Stern on November 21st of last year. And Exhibit 81 is received permission to publish is granted. Objection. My um, notes reflect <coughs> that it's 25 minutes. That is correct. Um, let me get the exact time of it. Objection, I didn't provide any statement on the 21st. Jerry will disregard the statement by Mr. Brooks. He is not testifying, therefore his statements are not evidence. And my objection should be noted for the record. <coughs> Your Honor, the um, entire video is 25 minutes and 27 seconds. The state is, will be playing from 4 minutes and 25 seconds to 14 minutes and 25 seconds. Thank you. Go ahead. Clarify. We had talked about it last night a little bit. Um, what we are hearing today is the audio interview only, correct? Objection leading. Oh, overruled is foundational. She may ask it that way. Go ahead. You may answer, sir. Yes, it's correct. Okay. Thank you. so short staff tonight so thank you yeah that's all it is how's your how's your, your shoulder right your, is that yeah you're... well he said in four to six weeks i might have to get it because it's still something wrong i know i know you banging up before or something nah just it was just the way they slammed me oh, okay hit the ground i kind of like went up boom boom that's where the knee well, came from knee but yeah, but the shoulder, I, I know. I know something's wrong. Yeah. Okay. He said four to six weeks, the MRI won't be able to tell if anything's torn or anything like that. So. Okay. Okay. FBI, though. We, we help out our local partners all the time. This yeah. is just something that we're here to do. Because <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah, believe it or not, we, we work at NPD a lot. We, we come down here, so we're kind of all over the place. Um, but yeah, like uh, Detective never, Carpenter like, said, we're you know, for real. The FBI yeah, for real. That's yeah. what this says, at least. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm not trying to be funny, but this is the first time I've ever even seen an FBI agent in real life. Mm -hmm. Most we get that reaction from most. Of <laughs> no, because it's like, am I in a movie right now, y'all? Show sure. y'all not punking, don't, don't pranking me or something. Yeah. Don't let, uh, you don't need to let that yeah. freak you out or anything. Right. Yeah. Again, we yeah. do work. So, so we work on a task force with. MPD quite a bit, so I'm we a, are. I'm gonna put my arm like this just to stretch it out. Just to, yeah. I don't yeah. want you to think I'm doing nothing crazy. You good? Just, you good? It leaves some pressure. Yeah. Something yeah. right up in. I'm, 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 no, you're good. Yeah, like she was saying, don't let the, you know, don't let, don't let them get all, don't let them make you nervous. Okay. Um, you'll be talking to me mostly and my partner a bit. No, you know, they'll ask you a little too, but. Um, just trying to get to the bottom of everything. Look, you were found basically running around in the yard. You said you grabbed dude's phone. That's no, really, I didn't grab it. I, well, I, I, I don't mean you stole it. You oh, asked yeah, for yeah. it and you made a call. Yeah. 
and that's just kind of what I'm up here to start with and, and get the background about it if you're willing to tell me just what you're doing in the yard you know because obviously we have the perception we got like I told you you know they said okay they had us write this warrant get some of your blood but I have one side so what am I missing I'm missing the Ralph side right I don't know what created all this why these people are calling us um, and I can't really clear that up or I'd like to clear that up but the best way to clear it up is if you know you want to talk to me about it okay and that's just kind of what I'm here to sit down and, and, and chill with you about we've been been talking to you about about four hours now and we've probably been pretty, longer yeah it's been pretty cool it's been pretty laid longer. back so I'm looking to keep it that way I'm not looking to, to pull any fast ones on you that's why I've been straight with you to that point I'm gonna keep doing that now right um, Darrell is it D-A-R-R-E-L-L -L? do I have the spelling right yes sir and it's E Edward like full middle is Edward yes, right yes sir Brooks B-R-O-O-K-S yes sir okay. And just verify your date of birth then for me. 82182. So you're 39? Yes, sir. Okay. Ooh. All right. Married at all? No. No? As little as I am, I'm like, you have to slam me. Yeah, how many kids you got? Three. Three? How old are they? 18, 14, and seven. 18, 14, and seven. Yeah, yes. what do they like to do? Uh, My baby girls, they are into everything that's going on right now the TikTok, the yeah. <laughs> the Instagram, the phone, right? they, they always dance and making videos. My, my oldest daughter just started high school yeah and my baby girl is she just started the first grade so, yeah. so they could my all son like, is the oldest my, my girls are the youngest they can like build a computer but can't normally talk like we know how to right yeah. <laughs> so you're born in Milwaukee uh, actually Detroit Detroit yes okay, sir but, Living in Milwaukee now? Yes, sir. Grew up here. Um, we left Detroit when I was maybe, I don't even think I was walking and talking yet. So, okay. Milwaukee's home, Wisconsin's home, born and raised. Okay. Uh, not working right now, right? No, not at the moment. No. What do you do when you're working? What do you like consider your job? Um, the last job I just had, I was working at a, um, like a sheet metal place. Okay. You know, basically just... Um, they would have like these uh, like hook things, like you just just basically it's strenuous because you got to do a lot of lifting lot of and lifting. it's a lot of heavy lifting. But you basically just hanging these pieces on these hooks and they're going through the thing, they're steaming them, painting them, then they okay. come back around and then you just box them okay. up and load them. So you're not married? No. Live, you have a girlfriend? Yeah. You live with her? No. What's her name? Your girlfriend's name? Her name is Erica Patterson. E R. How did you spell it? E R I K A. P A. Yeah, P A T T E R S O. Okay, and it's 4014 North 19th Street in Milwaukee. Do I have the right address? Yes, sir. Is that an apartment or a house? It's a house. Okay. What's the zip code there? Uh, 53209. Okay. Um, and last grade you completed in school? 12. Grade? Okay. Graduated high school? Yes, sir. What school did you go to in Milwaukee? Riverside. Riverside? Yes, sir. Milwaukee, Riverside. Tires. <laughs> I see you smile. You know about Riverside, man? I heard things. Uh, we kicked y'all butt in football. Uh, I was West Dallas. Oh, no. I don't think we played Riverside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I appreciate all the cooperation and all the good dialogue we've had, you know, to this point, Darrell. Um, you know, being that you're sitting here and you know, I had, had some handcuffs on you before and all that jazz, Absolutely. you familiar with your legal rights? Yes, have I Have you am. ever had those read to you before? Yes, I have. Okay. So as you can see, they're written on this paper. So because, you know, if I was sitting here and talking to you on your couch, we wouldn't have to worry about this. But because you're here and not in your home, it's just kind of a, it's kind of a thing I got to read to you. Okay. And again, it's just something I got to read to you before I kind of get your side or hopefully get your side here and love to hear your side. I'd like to know what the rel has to say about okay you know we got some people calling us saying this you know um he said you made under before no i wasn't driving someone thought you might have been he had to get that warrant he ended up calling a guy just to use his phone kind of loitering around and just you know how nah, you ended up how you ended up kind of being it that's okay. what they say no 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 no, no i was gonna say i i, I knocked on his door to use his yep. phone yep Damn. right but it probably wasn't him that called because he had his phone but 
someone was concerned about something. So just trying to figure out what's going on down in that neighborhood. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All I right, mean, Jerome. kind of, you know, like I said, oh. I, I probably, that wasn't probably the best, but I was just like, I need is. to get an Uber. Yep. I have money on my cash app card. Yep. So I'm not trying to rob anybody. Sure. I'm yeah. not trying to break it any. And obviously yep. you can tell I'm not drunk. I'm not, yep. you know, under the influence of anything. So. Okay. All right. Um, so <laughs> what it was. Okay. All right. Um, in regards to these, Darrell, then, do you understand that you have the right to remain silent? Just answer everything with a yes or no. Yes, sir. Okay. And then I just write down your reply. Um, do you understand if you give up that right, anything you say may be used against you in court? Yes, sir. Uh, do you understand you have the right to consult with an attorney and have an attorney present during any questioning? Yes, sir. Uh, do you understand if you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided to you by the court? Yes, sir. Understanding the above rights, uh, Darrell, are you willing to speak with me, us, primarily me, I'm the one that's going to be doing most of the talking probably. Uh, I just want to know a little bit more about what's going on. Just a little bit. Because like I'm, I'm I told just you, I know very confused. little. I just know that, you know, you were down in this neighborhood, someone called, you know, they didn't know what you were doing down there and things like that. So I got limited from their side, but I'm looking to see, you know, what you have to say about it. I'm looking to see, you know, maybe, maybe a lot of, maybe the caller was just on some BS down there. You know, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I don't know. But I can't I can't really show the court that if I don't have, you know, if I haven't talked to you. So that's why I'm here, just to kind of see what you got to say about it. Get your side of it. You know, running around a neighborhood is not, not the end of the world. It's not a huge deal. Right, right, you know? right, right. Unfortunately, I wouldn't have had to do that if, if I made better decisions with women. Yeah. But not going to point the finger. Sure. I'm a grown man. I make my own decisions, so... I'm not gonna point the finger at nobody. I just yeah. didn't think. <laughs> didn't think, yeah. yeah. What the hell? You want to speak with me, Darrell? Uh, not right now. So, was a decision made to speak with Mr. Brooks the following day? being called their name, leading the witness. The objections are overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, ma'am, it was. Okay. Now, when you spoke with the defendant on the 21st, what did you have some general information as to casualties from yes. the parade? Yes, I did. What information did you have at that point? At that point, not all the information was in yet, but I knew, um, as I stated in previous testimony, um, our emergency department was very full. Um, I knew there were significant injuries to many people. Um, I knew some were deceased. I did not know the exact number at that time. You had um, approximately another couple minutes of conversations with Mr. Brooks before you called it a night. Um, was he, what was the vibe that you got from him during those couple minutes? Objection, I don't consent to being called that name. It's leading the witness. The objection's overruled, you may answer. I would say f friendly. I think <coughs> when you heard the, the clip there, um, Mr. Brooks jokes about Riverside and football. The individual he was talking to at that time was Detective Stern, um, as you can't obviously see him in the video. Um, I could sense, and I believe you can hear it in Mr. Brooks's voice in that clip, um, the FBI put him on edge. It was unusual to see them. I could sense the nervousness he did transition as I talked to him more throughout that clip into a more normal conversational tone again. But when I was speaking with Mr. Brooks casually throughout the night, that was the type of tone um, he had with us. It was very friendly and he seemed, when it came to myself and Detective Stern, 
very comfortable speaking with us. Now you had stated your initial intent was to talk to him about loitering in the area <coughs> that he was arrested. Do you recall that? Objection, speaking to you. Overrule, the witness may answer. Yes, I do. Did Mr. Brooks at all talk to you about the loitering in terms of what the focus of your investigation was that night? Objection, <coughs> I don't consent to being called that name, leading the witness. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, the statements he made in there, um, you know, about, you know, being in the area because he needed an Uber. Um, you know, he, he says more, you know, to us about not knowing the area of Waukesha. He, he doesn't know the streets, things of that nature, and he just needed an, an Uber to get home. Um, so, yeah, that was that was his reasoning for for being down there, and he stuck to that reasoning the entire time. Direct your attention then to the next day. So, strike that. That night, was he transported to a Muskego Police Department? Yes, he was. And did you go to Muskego Police Department? Yes, I did. Um, did you transport him? So it was a dual transport. Uh, Officer Leha from the Waukesha Police Department responded to Waukesha Memorial Hospital in a, in a marked squad car that has a, an, uh, an appropriate rear backseat transport compartment. <clears throat> Mr. Brooks was placed in that car and myself and Detective Stern followed in a separate car. So once you get to City of Mosquito Police Department, do you do anything there? Objection, Lee. Overrule, you may answer. Not the first night, myself and Detective Stern stood by while some basic medical questions that were part of Mosquito Police Department's policy as far as holding a prisoner were asked of him. Um, I was there until Mr. Brooks was placed into his cell. Once Mr. Brooks was in his cell, I explained to him that I, me personally, would be returning the next day to speak with him more and give him more information about the investigation. Did Officer Leha end up staying at the Muskego Police Department with the defendant? Objection, respectfully to you. Overrule. Yes, he did. Why was that? Objection, D. Overrule. That was Muskego's request being Mr. Brooks was Although, so because of the transition and we did not have our own municipal lockup facility, um, we requested to use Muskego Police Departments and they allowed it. But being Mr. Brooks was technically in our custody, they requested that one of our officers stay um, there to do the monitoring and the jail trips. So do you return to the city of Muskego Police Department the next day, November 22nd, um, to speak with Mr. Brooks again? Objection. Yes, I did. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, I did. Did you return with anyone? Um, I returned with Detective Ben Stern. Now, what was the plan for this interview? You had said the previous day the intent was to kind of start very low, just looking at loitering. Um, did you have a plan going into the interview on the 22nd? Objection. Leading. Overruled. I did. What was that plan? So the plan was different from the prior day. So the interview with Mr. Brooks on the 22nd didn't start till about a little after noon that, af that afternoon, 12, 11 p.m. to be exact. Around 8 a.m. that morning, there was a briefing with all officers that were involved where I learned some additional information. Um, one of the things I learned that morning was that there was a domestic abuse incident that had occurred between Daryl Brooks and Erica Patterson, something I was not aware of when I was with Mr. Brooks during the evening hours of November 21st. Um, there was also much more information at this point in regards to the parade incident. Um, as I had stated in my earlier testimony, it was very, very chaotic that first night um, between radio traffic and what I could hear going on down in the downtown, as I had stated, it was really unlike anything I've ever been involved in. But by Tuesday morning, the 22nd, we had narrowed it down to basically just Mr. Brooks, that there were not four people in this car, we were looking at one man. So he was now a suspect in the domestic abuse and driving in the parade. So I chose to begin the interview 
on the less serious matter, that being the the battery charge that he was looking at with Erica Patterson. Now you said Tuesday <clears throat> the twenty second. Um, <clears throat> Monday, excuse me. Okay, thank you. And um, what do you try to do when you're meeting with someone? Do you, do you try to establish any type of rapport with that person? Is that helpful? Do you, how did you approach this interview on the 22nd? Objection leading. Um, I'll sustain it to the form of the question. It was actually compound. If you could rephrase. How did you approach the question of Mr. Brooks on the 22nd? Objection. I don't consent to being called their name. Overruled the witness and the answer. So when I began to speak with Daryl Brooks on the 22nd, um, I began with some very light conversation. I explained to Mr. Brooks that I had more information from the previous day. I explained to Mr. Brooks that his girlfriend at that time, Erica Patterson, had made some domestic abuse allegations against him that were physical in nature. I didn't indicate to him exactly what she said he did, but that there were physical allegations. Um, I explained to Mr. Brooks that there's always two sides to a story and that, you know, a lot of times in my experience as an officer, it, it can be about perspective. There's one, there's side A, there's side C, so to speak, and maybe B, somewhere in the middle, can, can be your truth. Um, and I basically just implored him to be honest. I, I touched on the fact we had talked extensively the night before about things such as him enjoying baseball, him having watched the Packer game, him having been disappointed by the result of the Packer game. And in situations such as interrogations, I think it's always important to let a person know that obviously I'm an officer, but I'm a human being, as are they. And you want to try to not let them see that barrier and feel comfortable talking to you. I think in any interpersonal relationship in society, there needs to be rapport. And I try to establish that before getting into the specific details of the crime at hand. Now, you said that you had a briefing prior to going back to the City of Mosquito Police Department? Yes, ma'am. Did you have, um, you said you had more information about the parade incident and also the domestic incident, correct? Correct. Um, overruled, his answer may stand. Next question. Did you know at that time prior to speaking with Mr. Brooks how many people had died during the parade incident? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, I did. And how many people was that at that time? Objection leading. Overruled. At that point, it was five. So did you confirm, again, personal information for the defendant um, before starting the interview? Yes, I did. Did you read the or him the Miranda form like you did the night before? Yes, I did. I'm going to show you what's been marked as States Exhibit 174. Now, is that the Miranda statement form that you completed on November 22nd with Mr. Brooks? Objection, leading. Yes, it is. And what time was that completed? 12, 11 p.m. Um, I what exhibit is that? 180, uh, 174. 174. 174. Um, and did you read that form to Mr. Brooks? Objection. What did you say? Overruled. Yes, I did. And did you read that form to him in its entirety? Yes, I did. I'd ask that Exhibit 174 be moved into evidence. Objection. Relevancy. Exhibit 174 is received. Now, when we look at Exhibit 174, it says spouse's name. It says Erica Patterson. Do you see that? Objection. Leading. Um, sustained it to the form of the question. You did not ask the published. I did not. I just want to make sure that's what you were not looking to do. Correct. No. Okay. Thank um, you. There's a spot in this form that says spouse's name. Is that filled in? Yes. And what does it say? Objection leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. It says Erica Patterson. Did he say that they were married? He did not. He said um, that was his girlfriend, however. Okay. And he indicated he had children? Objection leading. It's background foundational. It's... The witness may answer. The objection's overruled. Yes, he did. 
How many children did he have? Objection leading. Overruled. Three. Okay. And you read each of the five rights that are listed on this form? Yes, I did. And did he agree to speak with you? Yes, ma'am, he did. Okay. I would ask that Exhibit 174 be published to the jury. Objection. Let me see. The exhibit's already been received. Noting your objection, it's overruled. Permission to publish is granted. Now, as that form is coming up in the jury box, just for the, the jurors to see, um, when you initially had contact with the defendant that morning, did you verify <coughs> if he had been fed? Objection. Speculative. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, I did. And had he been fed dinner the night before, breakfast that morning, lunch that afternoon? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Yes, he had. And was he complaining about any physical injuries? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Uh, yes, he was continuing to complain about, <clears throat> excuse me, he was continuing to complain about um, the injury to his right shoulder, um, which he still at that time was asserting. would be correct okay and you've had the opportunity to listen to that interview yes I have I'm gonna go through that interview um, with you I'm not gonna play um, the whole five hours um, but just portions of that I'll stop it during um, during specific clips that I'm providing providing to Miss Gussie and we'll talk about it is that all right yes that's fine okay before you do that, I'm told our interpreter will be here momentarily, and rather than you start, I think it would be best if we just take a short break till the interpreter's here. Yes. Is the witness here? Um, I believe he was and coming at 10. Oh, we okay. That's fine then. then. I appreciate that additional information then. We'll keep going. Sorry for the interruption. Um, let me see if maybe he's here early. Okay. Yeah. Keep going and just let me know when the witness gets here. Okay, you can take this exhibit off the screen. If we can go to seven minutes and 30 seconds to eight minutes and 20 seconds. Now, before she starts it, um, is this the interview room that was at the CMC Police Department? Yes, it is. Okay. And um, it's paused right now, but um, who's in that room? Objection leader. Overruled. The person in that room in the red t-shirt with the mask partially covering their face, longer braided appearing hair, is Daryl Edward Brooks. The same individual sitting to my left in this suit, jacket, shorter hair, and surgical mask. Okay. And the other two people depicted here? Uh, the person, as you would look to the screen to the left, is myself, and on the right is Detective Ben Stern. Okay. So again, going to seven minutes and 30 seconds. <coughs> but not with sound until seven minutes and 30 seconds. Go ahead. Okay. So it now is at seven minutes and 30 seconds. If we can play until eight minutes and 20 seconds. Hang hey, the metal pieces on the, um, the little machine thing that comes around. They take them, they, they, the pieces go through like this little steamer type machine thing and then they paint it and I'm 
my oldest daughter is 14 and my youngest daughter is 7. You said your son, oldest well, son's grown, how old is he? He's 18. Okay. They all live with you then in Milwaukee? Well, my son doesn't. Your son doesn't? My son doesn't. But. Okay. All right. So initially, what were you speaking with uh, Mr. Brooks about when he was describing um, doing something with metal? Objection leading, and I do not, not consent to being called that name. Overruled as to both objections, the witness may answer. Just about work, he was, uh, Mr. Brooks was explaining a job he had had prior. Uh, he indicated he was laid off due to the pandemic. Um, so it was just general conversation about his work history. Okay. And um, he talked about his kids. Um, do you recall that? Yes. And his two youngest kids, who did he say they lived with? Objection. The Overruled. Objection. Relevancy. Answer. Mr. Brooks was indicating they were living with him. However, uh, the investigation showed that not to be the case. Uh, of the two daughters, one lives down in Georgia in the Atlanta area and the other lives in Iowa. Okay, thank you. Now directing your attention to 14 minutes and 15 seconds into the interview, and I'd be playing that until 15 minutes and 48 seconds into the interview. It is currently at 14 minutes and 15 <coughs> seconds. Can I have those uh, timestamps again, please? Sure. 14 minutes and 15 seconds beginning to 15 minutes and 48 seconds. Thank you. I'd ask that that be played at this time. Go ahead. We're not on your college debt. I got to read it, okay? Um, and I know you've, had, you've heard it before, so you can't understand that. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have any questions before I start for me? The only thing I want to know is what in the heck? Am I being charged with anything? Well, she's making some, like I said, alleged allegations against you kind of, you know, for being physical. So that's what, you know, if that's BS, that's what I'm looking to hear from you. Okay? Total BS. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of, we couldn't track her down, so that's that's kind of where we're at. It's this typical back and forth stuff that guys like you go through with their baby mama all the time. And they're all, you know, there's a lot of guys out there in your spot, you know. <laughs> and a lot of times, you know, maybe it's, it's not always fair to them. But that's kind of what I, I wish they had a law out. to where people can, if you do that shit, you should get in trouble. Sure. Yeah. Like, why? You shouldn't be able to just be like, oh, I'm pissed off, so I'm yeah. going to call and do this. Yep. I agree. Like, that's, why would you put me in that situation and then you know we're going to end up being together anyway? And that's why would you do that? Trying to judge that credibility. Yep, yeah, and that's, that's total BS. So that's what I, I'm, that's why we're sitting in here with you to try to, to, Siphon through, sift through the BS if that's what we got, and just go from there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, All right. Fucking girl, man. I said this last night too, didn't yeah. I? She get drunk and think, remember I kept saying that she fucking acts a fool, and I'm the one that pays for it. Yep. Can you tell the jury a little bit about this clip? Oh. So in this clip here, I'm just explaining to Mr. Brooks um, the background of the domestic abuse allegations that you know officers had received from Erica Patterson, um, and that I was looking to get basically clarity on that, his side of the story on that, um, have him help me understand what aspects of it may or may not be true, and um, just walk me through what had occurred between between the two of them. Again, although we're approximately um, 15 minutes into the interview, have you mentioned anything about the parade incident or any victims? Objection. The Overruled. The witness may answer. I had not said anything about that at this point. Okay. And why was that? So what I wanted to do with this interview, as I stated in my earlier testimony, uh, I wanted to start with the smaller things and get to the bigger things. Um, the parade incident with the injuries of the individuals and the loss of life was obviously very serious. Um, part of what I believe as an investigator is very important is gauging credibility in the, in the interview. And one of the ways you do that is you need to be careful. Obviously at some point, if I'm gonna take Mr. Brooks to jail, I have to tell him what he's being charged with. But I wanna be very careful in giving too much information early on 
um, so that I'm not leading him, so that I'm not giving him the opportunity based on information to create lies. Um, I want to see how he reacts to things to help me gauge whether he's being truthful. And I found starting with the smaller aspect and seeing how truthful he was with that could help lead me into the more serious allegations and see if he was going to be truthful about those things as well. Now, as I watched the, the snippet of the video that we showed, at one point you had indicated, you know, guys like you get, you know, get into these kind of situations with girls like that or something to that effect. Do you recall that interaction in this video? Yes, I do. What do you mean by that? Or what were, strike that, what were you trying to establish by making that statement? Again, with, as I had stated in my earlier testimony, part of what I believe is important is simply building a rapport with an individual. Again, you always have with any individual and in any interrogation, um, there's the natural barrier that can occur with them seeing you as a law enforcement officer. Um, I've been doing this job for 18 years. Um, that was not intended on any way upon my part to suggest to Mr. Brooks that everything his girlfriend was saying was a lie. I just wanted him to feel comfortable telling me the truth, whatever that truth was, um, man to man or person to person, human being to human being. Lying. Um, directing your attention to um, 30 minutes and 26 seconds and playing this clip until 40 minutes and 30 seconds. Um, let's do that now. Objection. Um, wasn't it just said we was 15 minutes in the interview? Why is it playing from 30 minutes? Um, your objection is noted. It's overruled again. That's 3026, you said? 3026 to 4030. To 4030. Now, what brought you to Waukesha yesterday? How did you get out here? I was meeting up with a friend to watch the Packer game. Okay. That's the only reason why I was, was out here. Where did you go to watch the game? To a friend named uh, Stephanie. A house, a bar? Or? A house. And yeah, I don't mean to make you uncomfortable or anything, but what's the address there? What's your I have on no there? idea about what we saw. I don't know the street. What was I it near? Know. I know you had to see something near it. Uh, so what was it near? Like a gas station. Have you been to the house before? No. Never before? No. What's Stephanie's last name? I have no idea. <laughs> I have uh, no idea. When did you guys set this up? Um, maybe a couple of days ago. Okay. Like I said, I, I have a few friends. I have a few friends in Milwaukee that have people out here, so. Okay. It's not, I don't, like I said last night, I don't know the streets in Waukesha. It's not where I usually hang out at, so I, I couldn't say, well, this street, this street, and this, but, you know, I couldn't. All right. Stephanie, like a friend of yours or like a friend of a friend? A, a friend of a friend, mutual okay. friend. And what did you say her last name was? I have no idea. How long have you known her? That was my first time meeting her. So. so how did you get the number to know the house to go to? A friend. A friend. <laughs> so how did you get to her house? My friend. I went with my friend. Okay, who's that? Uh, my friend. I don't really want to say his name. I don't know if that's going to incriminate him in anything. So. Okay, so let's go with this. How did you come? I know you saw Erica yesterday in Waukesha because we talked to her. Now, I don't know everything that went on, and I'm not saying I believe everything she told the other officers. How did you come to meet with her in Waukesha, one? And two, you say you don't know Waukesha, but where did you meet her? A gas station, a park? I know you met her. Where did you meet her? What what happened yesterday? Because yeah, so, if this is BS, like you say, and I know you met her, what happened? I met so her. What happened when you met her? Where did you meet her? Let's start with that. By a gas station. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> 
what I was supposed to be getting some money from her. How did, okay. For what? Um, it was the rest of my money that she had of mine that she was holding for me. Okay, how much? Um, it was supposed to be $350. Okay. And what did she, why did she have it? Why, why was she holding well, she, it? She had been holding it for me for a few weeks now. But like I said, I hadn't seen her. She had seen it. Right, but what was she holding, why did she have it? Why was she holding it for you? She was just holding it for me because I told her to hold it for me. But this was, it didn't have anything to do with, this was weeks ago she had been holding the money. And because I had no contact with her, I couldn't tell her. And my mom wasn't going to let her come to the house to bring it. Mm -hmm. And I told her, look, man, if I'm going to be out there, I'll meet up with you and, and get the money. But I'm not hanging out with you. I'm not having sex with you. And she was just like, oh, you want to keep? I'm like, I'm not finna do none of that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm not supposed to be around you. I get that. I understand that. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm not supposed to be around you. I love you to death, man. You're my baby mama. I'm not going to, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't supposed to be like a hangout thing. I told her, I'm like, I'm out here. And she's like, oh, where you at? Where you at? Where you at? And I'm like, look, I'll meet up with you to get the money and, you know, give you a hug or whatever. But she was like, well, yeah, I need something. I'm like, no, we can't do it all, all that. I'm not going to have sex with you. I'm not going to hang out with you. Or none of that. All right. So you told her you weren't you weren't going to do any of that stuff. No. How did you set the meeting up? Did you did you talk to her on the phone, Facebook Messenger, text message? Cause I talked to her. Yeah, I, I don't think she said anything about that. So just I mean, if she's BS, how did you how did yeah, you? Yeah, because I didn't. With her? I didn't. She. This is what she does. If well, she hold on one second. Hold on one thing at a time. How did you set the meeting with her? How do I verify? That's what that's what I'm saying. She if she can't get in touch with me. That's what she'll do. She'll go to social medias and do all this and try to okay. talk to people and all this and that. I got in contact with her through a mutual friend that we both know. And I was like, okay, tell her I'm out in Waukesha or whatever, and I'll meet up with her to get the money. And then she put us on the call. And she was just like, where are you at? Wait, call? Yeah. And she was just like, where are you at? I'm like, look, I don't know where I'm at. Do you still got that money? She's like, yeah, I want to give you the money, and I want to, I want to do this and do that. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna have, I'm not gonna hang out with you. I'm gonna meet up with you, get the money, give you a hug and kiss. We'll talk later. Was it still daylight? It was still daylight. daylight. It was still okay. daylight. So was after the fact, this was, I think the game was still on. Yeah, it was on. So the game was still on. Left Stephanie used to go. Yep. Okay. The game was still on. So I was like, fuck it. You know what I mean? I want to see you. I ain't seen you in like a month. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to lie and say, man, that's my baby mama. I love this woman. But I can't hang out with you. I can't do anything with you, you know, that type of thing, deal, and whatever the case may be. But, yeah. That. And this is on your cell phone? The three-way call, obviously, is your cell phone because you're not no, on phone, right? My friend's phone. Friend's phone. Yeah. But yesterday, so do you have your phone? No. That's what I'm saying. No. So who is the friend whose phone you were using to talk to Hit her on a three-way call? I don't want to say his name because I don't want to. Okay, I guess. So you saw her, though. Right? You met up with her. Okay. So how did the conversation with her end? With me walking off? And her being pissed off that I didn't want to hang out with her. I said, look, I'm not supposed to be around you. I'm gone. Okay. When she whose said, oh, did you use to get out she there? said, I didn't, I didn't have a car. No, whose car did you use to get to Waukesha? My friend, my friend is the one that said he was going to go hang out and watch the Packer game. I said, I'm going to go with. Okay. Whose car did you use to get out to Waukesha? I didn't use anybody's car. Where does your friend live? My friend lives in Milwaukee. So you, you didn't walk to Waukesha. Whose car no, did you guys use? My friend. I just said it. My what friend type of car is you? I, I'm just trying to figure out how you got here. Yeah, I know, but it seemed like you trying to like spin me up or something. Like I'm just asking how you got here. Whose car did you drive out here? 
I didn't drive at all. What <laughs> car did you come out here in? My friend. Okay, right. What kind of car is it? So here's the thing, Darrell. Okay. Um, obviously, you know, she's coming at us. I told you she's talking about some domestic related issues, okay? Um, you know, and I don't know if she's on BS. I don't know if she's not. I'm telling you. Hold on, let me finish. Okay. Let me finish. Let me finish. I don't want you to get. Yeah, because you know, Hold on, let me finish. You know, I don't entirely know all that, okay? I'm just right now trying to figure out how you get out here. So I gotta step out with my partner for a minute. Just relax. Don't I want you to get you all nervous, okay? But you know, I'm not trying to be confrontational, but I, I don't think when you meet her out in Waukesha and you're not from Waukesha, I think a reasonable question is to ask, How did you get out here? Yeah. Whether you drove, someone else drove, and if so when you got out here, what type of car you were in? So just um every hour or so my boss, he knows we're out here. I just gotta call him, say, Yeah, we're talking, I'll call you back later. Just gotta step out throw in a line with him and we'll come back. Just chill out here, enjoy your soda. We'll be right back. Alright? Sound good? Okay. So we done talking or No, 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 no. We'll come back. Just chill out and we'll be back. We just gotta make that call. That. So I just gotta make that call. That check in call. Alright? In the middle of the conversation. Well do you wanna tell me about the car? We'll just go another couple minutes. Yeah, but I'm, I'm I mean just, I gotta call him, I can come back, but I just all that listen, I'm i I'm willing to Listen, Carpenter, you've been straight up with me, you've been straight up with me, right? Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is I just want to know what I'm looking at and if I can just notify my girls. That's it. I don't have a problem with talking to you guys at all. I just want to know what am I looking at. That's it. You at the start, she called about some domestic abuse-related stuff. Now, I didn't talk to her myself. I told you that at the start. You said she was crazy. We talked about Y'all know that. Y'all talked yeah. to the woman. No, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, other I apologize. You talk. Slow down. Other officers that we listened to the interview. Slow down, Did, did she look beat up? Did she look like, dude, Darrell, like, come, come on now, man. Slow down, dude. All right? We can't explain it to you if you keep talking over us. You know what I'm saying? All right? I didn't talk to her. I didn't see her. Okay? Now... Okay, with regard to that clip, sir, um, we we have a lot of talk about her, meeting her. Who Who is her? Objection leading. Overruled. The her in this case is Erica Patterson. So you, did you have some conversations with Mr. Brooks before this clip about his relationship with Ms. Patterson? Objection leading. <laughs> I do consent to be in court that name. The objections are overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, I did. Now, at the end of this video, um, not the end of the video, but the end of this clip, again, he is saying, what am I looking at? Do you recall him saying that in this video? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, I do. Was this a theme throughout this five-hour video? Objection leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, it was. <laughs> Did he... You had stated initially when he came into the room, he had complained about some shoulder pain? Yes, he did. Did that continue throughout the interview? Objection, relevancy. Overruled. The witness may answer. So, I would say what happened is it went on and off. So at this point here, um, the interview at this point in time was what I would describe as laid back. Um, a lot of it was simply getting background about the overall relationship between Mr. Brooks and Ms. Patterson. Um, during that time, he was fine. Um, he was moving his arms, as you could see in this clip. He wasn't complaining about pain. Um, what I noticed and made me question the legitimacy, legitimacy of the injury before ever actually even seeing the body cam is I noted at times of stress later in this interview as I continue to push on a vehicle um, I can see as you could see here I believe it can be seen here in this interview talking about the car made him uncomfortable 
complaints about the pain would suddenly come back. How about the uh, request to be told what he's looking at? Did you see any correlation between that and what was occurring during the interview? Objection speculative. Overruled the witness may answer. Yes, that, um, as I say, that continued throughout the entirety of the interview and you know, really at this point was a little unusual because um, right now he had been told he was looking at the domestic. The parade hadn't come up. So uh, a reasonable person, I believe, at this point of the interview knew what they were looking at. They were looking at a domestic abuse incident. Um, why simply asking him how he got out here as far as transportation made him nervous was um, alarming. An example of him, you said that you had seen him using his arms a little bit in this clip, is that correct? Objection leading. Sustain us to the form of the question. Um, you had stated that, um, what observations did you make during this clip about the use of his right arm? He would move it from side to side. So, I mean, both his arms would come out like this and move. Um, he would make mannerisms when he was speaking with both arms that were, to me, what a person would do when they're normally conversing. And um, it would seem unusual to make those movements if he was in fact in as much pain as he was claiming to us he was in. Now I'm gonna just for the, let the record reflect that um, when you would indicate it, he'd move his arms this way. You moved both your right and left arm out um, parallel to the ground at about shoulder level. Would that be accurate? Yes, it would. Okay. I'm going to show you a clip beginning at 52 minutes and 15 seconds <coughs> to 52 minutes and 42 seconds. So a very short clip. Go ahead. That and then she makes this complaint when she gets you back. Yeah, and it's and like, why do you do this to me? And, and I, I promise you, I promise you, my right hand to God Almighty on the throne with Jesus next to his side. The woman is going to sit up there and say, I was drunk, I was mad, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, now I got to go through everything just for you to do that. Why did you do this to me? So you think she's going to come back to us? So we saw some motions with his arms during this clip. Would that be an accurate statement? Jason relevancy. Overruled, the witness may answer. Could you explain to the jury what you observed? So I observed uh, Mr. Brooks move his arms to his side, above his head, um, his right arm almost fully above his head at points. Um, quite frankly showing that arm seemed to have full range of motion. Now you had testified yesterday, um, you had seen a video or a still shot from a video and you identified the defendant driving a red SUV. Do you recall that testimony? Objection leading. Um, overall, mm -hmm. the witness may answer. Yes, I do. And when the defendant was telling you about his friend bringing him out in a tan Kia, I think he said, um, did you believe that to be true? Objection. Um, sustained. It's for the jury to determine credibility. Did the you will not answer that. Did you ever see any video of the defendant driving in a tan Kia during the time of the parade? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. The witness may answer that. No, I did not. Directing uh, the video to one hour, four minutes, 30 seconds, <coughs> and playing until one hour, 18 minutes, and two seconds. Before we go to this clip, I know we have the witness, I've been told, and the interpreter uh, available. So I would like to uh, put further testimony and watching of these clips on hold. <coughs> Um, we do need to take a witness out of order in order to accommodate the interpreter that the court has arranged for. So, Detective Carpenter, you may uh, be excused momentarily. <coughs> and 
then if Mr. Ryan would accompany the witness, this will be Mr. Uh, Juan Marquez being called by Mr. Brooks. Interpreter sworn first. Do you swear that you will interpret truly, accurately, completely, and impartially in accordance with the standards prescribed by law, the Code of Ethics for Court Interpreters, and Wisconsin Guidelines for Court Interpreting? I do. Certified Spanish Interpreter Patrick Ryan. Thank you. And Mr. Marquez, would you please raise your right hand and be sworn by my clerk? Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Say. Yes. Please have a seat. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I have an instruction to read to you. No matter what language people speak, they have the right to have their testimony heard and understood. You are about to hear a witness in which an interpreter will translate for one of the witnesses. The interpreter is required to remain neutral. The interpreter is required to translate between English and Spanish accurately and impartially to the best of the interpreter's skill and judgment. The evidence you are to consider is only that provided through the official court interpreter. Although some of you may know the non-English language used, it is important that all jurors consider the same evidence. Therefore, you must base your decision on the evidence presented in the English translation. You must disregard any different meaning of the non-English words. You must evaluate interpreted testimony as you would any other testimony. That is, you must not give interpreted testimony any greater or lesser weight than you would if the witness had spoken English. Keep in mind that a person might speak some English without speaking it fluently. That person has the right to the services of an interpreter. Therefore, you shall not give greater or lesser weight to a person's translated testimony based on your conclusions, if any, regarding the extent to which that person speaks English. With that, sir, the first thing I will ask you to do is to state and spell your first and last names for the record. Juan Marquez. Juan Marquez. J-U-A-N. J-U-A-N. M-A-R-Q-U-E-Z. M-A-R-Q-U-E-Z. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. You may question this witness. Uh, good morning, Mr. Marquez. Uh, you were at the parade on November 21st, 2021. Is that correct? That is correct. And do you recall who you, were, who you were there with that day? With my wife and with my son. And were you marching in the parade that day? Yes. Do you remember who you were marching with? Was it a uh, particular group? 
Sí. Yes. Do you recall who that group was? ¿Se acuerda quién quién era el grupo con el cual estaba desfilando? Sí. Yes. <coughs> And at some point you felt something hit your leg? Y en un momento usted escuchó, usted sintió que algo le, le pegó su, su pierna. Es correcto. That's correct. And do you remember what that was? ¿Se acuerda qué fue? Un vehículo. A vehicle. And did you see the vehicle? ¿Vio el vehículo? ¿Lo vio? No. No. At some point, did you uh, go to Freighter Hospital? In a moment, you step aside and look at Freighter. See. Yes. And were you inter interviewed by any law enforcement at that time? Yo fui entrevistado por algún agente policial o policía. Sí. Yes. Do you recall if it was uh, regular officers or FBI? ¿Se acuerda si fue un oficial regular o fue la gente de FBI? FBI. FBI. <clears throat> Do you recall telling them that the truck was black? Se acuerda que usted Grounds. Um, the objection is sustained as to leading. Please rephrase your question. <coughs> Do you remember what color you told them the truck was? Se acuerda si usted se acuerda qué color dijo él, qué qué ¿Qué color de la troca fue? No recuerdo. I don't remember. So it would be fair to say you don't recall seeing anything at that time? ¿Se puede decir que usted no se acuerda de nada en ese tiempo? Mm, no. No. And did you at any time file a claim related to this incident? En algún momento usted hizo un reclamo con respecto a este incidente? No recuerdo. I don't remember. Do you know if anyone you were with filed a, a claim related to this incident? Sabes si alguien con el alguien que la acompañó si ha hecho un reclamo con respecto a este incidente? No lo sé. I don't know. Would you consider yourself an injured party in this incident? Usted se considera una una parte herida lesionada debido a este incidente. Sí. Yes. Any reason why you wouldn't file a claim since you considered yourself an injured party? Por eso que usted grounds se considera una persona no herida durante ese incidente. ¿Alguna razón por la cual no archivaría un reclamo? There's an objection. It's sustained as to the form of the question. Please rephrase. Por favor, diga la pregunta de nuevo. ¿Me puede repetir la pregunta? There's an objection. You don't need to answer. No tiene que contestar. Could you repeat the question, please? Please rephrase, Mr. Brooks. Por favor, diga la pregunta de diferente manera, señor Brooks. That's kind of hard to rephrase. Did 
Did you intend on uh, filing a claim related to this case? What objection. Yeah, objection. Hold on, there's been an objection. The ground. Your Honor, first of all, I, this witness testified he doesn't recall filing a claim. So I'm not sure what the relevance then would be of the question. The question was, did he intend on it? I'll sustain the objection as to the form of the question. Please rephrase. Do you recall at any time filing a police report? Yes. And was that with uh, local law enforcement? If you recall, I don't remember. Did anyone, uh, did any law enforcement from that report follow up with you at any time? Yes. And do you recall what agency that was? No. No. Do you recall at any time being notified that you could possibly testify in this incident? Could you repeat the question? Sure. Um, at, do you recall at any time being notified that it was a possibility that you could testify in this incident? No. No. Uh, were you ever subpoenaed in relation to this incident? ¿Lo citaron alguna vez a corte con respecto a ese incidente? Sí. Yes. Do you recall who you re uh, received this subpoena from? ¿Se acuerda de quién recibió la citatoria de corte? Del distrito de la oficina del fiscal. From the office of the district attorney. And do you recall when that was? ¿Se acuerda cuándo fue? Mes, un mes y días. A month and a few days. And following being subpoenaed, or following, rather, to strike that back, um, after receiving the subpoena, did you follow up with the district attorney's office at any time after? Después de recibir entonces el citatorio, uh, recibió un tipo de seguimiento por medio de la oficina fiscal después del incidente? Sí. Yes. Do you recall whom you spoke with? ¿Se acuerda con quién habló? Susan. Susan. Would that be referring to Attorney Opera who is seated at this table? Uh, ¿Se refiere a Susan Opera que está sentado a esa mesa? Sí. Yes.
And were you at any time uh, informed of a plaintiff in this incident? Objection of relevance. Sustained. Were you at any time notified that there was a plaintiff in this incident? Objection. Grounds. The objection is sustained. The witness does not need to answer. Do you even know if there's a plaintiff in this incident? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. The objection is sustained. The witness does not need to answer. Call ever seen? <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Do you ever call? <coughs> Sorry. Do you recall ever seeing or reading a complaint in this matter? No. Okay. Okay. Do you recall seeing or reading a complaint in Going back to the the actual incident, would it be fair to say that at the time you were you were very confused? Volviendo entonces al incidente, se puede decir que en ese tiempo usted estaba bastante confundido. Me puede repetir la pregunta. Could you repeat the question? Uh, going back to the time of the incident at the parade, would it be fair to say that you were confused at the time? Volviendo entonces al momento del, del, del desfile, ¿Se, se, ¿se puede decir que usted estaba confundido en ese tiempo? No. No. Any reason why you don't recall seeing anything? ¿Hay alguna razón por la cual usted no se acuerda de ver algo? ¿Me puede repetir la pregunta? Could you repeat the question? Any reason why you don't recall seeing anything? ¿Hay alguna razón por la cual usted no se acuerda de ver nada? No vi el vehículo. I did not see the vehicle. Solo pasó. It just passed by. Sorry, the interpreter needs to make a clarification on, on the, his last response. If I can inquire, cuando te dice que 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 pasó el vehículo, quiere decir que que ocurrió el incidente o que el 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 vehículo pasó por usted. Que es cool cuando usted dice pasó pasó el vehículo o que había pasó como ocurrió. Ocurrió me pegó y pasó rápido. For clarification, um, the interpreter inquired if he meant the vehicle passed by or if the incident happened. Uh, the defendant, the interpreter for clarification, the interpreter would like to say that he meant that it just happened, that the vehicle just hit him, rather than, I believe the interpreter translated what he said as it passed by. What he meant to say is that it actually happened rather than passed by. So for that point of clarification for the record. Thank you.
also for clarification, just just so we're clear for the record. You don't recall actually seeing the vehicle. También sí, vamos a recordar acta. No se acuerda que vio el vehículo. No. No. No further questions. No más preguntas. Any questions, Attorney Basie? Briefly. Good morning, Mr. Rakez. Good morning. On November 21st of last year, were you walking with the Catholic communities of Waukesha? El 21 de noviembre del año pasado. Desfilando con Catholic communities of Waukesha. Es correcto. That's correct. Hold on. What was the objection? I mean, you, you have to speak up. I couldn't hear what you I said. Have, I have a cold, so I can't. Mr. Brooks, was there an objection? So I can move on. Yeah, yes, there was an objection. I can't even remember now. Well, if you were objecting on relevance, it's relevant. His answer may stand. It wasn't relevant, so I'll tell you. Mr. Marquez. If you hear the word objection, please wait until I rule on the objection before you answer. Thank you. Go ahead. So we did answer the question? Sí, contestó la pregunta. Sí. Yes. Thank you. Muchas gracias. You were with your wife and your son? Estaba con su esposa y su hijo. Sí. Yes. And your son's name is David Marquez? Objection leading. Overruled. You called the witness. The state may lead. Go ahead and answer. What's that mean? Go ahead and answer, sir. Sí. Yes. You testified that at some point you were struck by a vehicle. Objection. Overruled. You may answer. Sí. Yes. Did you have any warning before you were struck by the car? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. The witness may answer. No. No. Did you hear a horn honking? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. The witness may answer. No. No. Sir, I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 161. Go ahead. Do you, can you see that picture on the screen in front of you? Yes. And do you see the approximate area where you landed after the vehicle struck you? Objection leading. Overruled. The state may lead. That's not their witness. Go ahead and answer, sir. So when is so I can lead too if it's not my witness? No. no. Well, hold on. We'll get to that later. There's been an objection. I'm overruling it. Go ahead and re ask your question. State can do what they want. Do you, do you see the area in which you landed after the vehicle struck you? See. Yes. The um. I'd ask that uh, this. Exhibit the admitted to evidence, which is 161, and published to the jury. Objection. Um, we can't even see. We can't even see who who is what, what exactly is the state referring to. You can't even see who it is. Uh -huh. Just state your objection. It's overruled. Um, it's going to be overruled because it's attempt to testify. But if the state could just ask uh, a few more foundational question or questions, please. Certainly. What, when you met with the state, did you review some video of the parade? Objection, hearsay. Overruled the witness may answer. Sí. Yes. And after reviewing that video, were you able to determine a pro the area in which your body landed after you were struck by the car. Objection, hearsay, and leading. Overruled as to both, you may answer, sir. Objection, hearsay, and leading. Go ahead. Yes. 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 Yes
determinó el área. ¿Te acuerdas dónde su cuerpo quedó después de que el vehículo chocó? Sí. Yes. And you see that area on this exhibit. Objection, leading. Overall, the witness may answer. Sí. Yes. I'd ask that this uh, exhibit be admitted to evidence and published for the jury. Objection, what's the relevancy? Uh, the objections are noted, they are overruled, and exhibit 161 is received, permission to publish is granted. And I've been, it's indicated that that is now being seen in the jury uh, box. Thank you. Sir, the screen in front of you is a, a touch screen. Can you circle the area in which you believe you landed? Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Let me say where they believe. Either you know or you don't. The witness may answer. Say, yes. Dick. Can you do that now? That's where it is fixed on all the If we can take a snapshot of that. I don't know what Mr. Brooks just mumbled, but it's not his turn to answer, ask questions. There was no objection. The jury will disregard that. And this would be exhibit 161A. And we'll screen capture that. Exhibit 161A has been captured. Are you moving that in? I am. And Exhibit 161 is received. 161A. Thank you. And do you see anyone that you recognize standing in that area? Objection leading. <coughs> Overruled. The state may lead. It's cross-examination of your witness, sir. So I can lead on uh, cross-examination, Dean? I direct your attention to 906.11 sub 3, I sir. On cross -examination? I'm not going to answer that. Go ahead, uh, so sir. You may answer. So determination that you don't have to answer that? If I don't understand something? The jury will disregard the comments being made by Mr. Brooks. Judicial determination, okay. Go ahead and answer the question if you recall it, sir. ¿Me puede repetir la pregunta? Could you repeat the question? Yes. <clears throat> Do you see, actually... Do you see David, um, your son, in okay. that picture? Objection. That was Yes. And is he wearing... So my objection is not going to be noted. The objection is overruled. The state chose to ask a different question. That's fine. <clears throat> and is he seated um, near some blue chairs wearing a blue jacket? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Sí. Yes. And sir, is that you laying down and you can see in this um, picture your legs and they're <laughs> hanging into the roadway? Objection leading. Witness may answer. Overruled. Sí. Yes. Now, <clears throat> is that where you were walking when you were struck from behind? Objection in that leading. Position? Overruled, you may answer. No. No. How far from the position that you recalled yourself to be at when you were walking did you land? Objection leading. Overruled, you may answer. Me pongo en evidencia por referencia. Anulada, puede contestar la pregunta. Entre 15 a 20 pies. Between 15 and 20 feet. Okay. So your body flew through the air between 15 and 20 feet. Is that Objection what your testimony leading. is? Okay. Yes. Sorry, I didn't rule on the objection, but it is overruled and his answer may stand. Was David also struck by a vehicle during the parade? Okay. Yes. Did he, re he received injuries as well? Objection, relevancy. Overruled, you may answer. Okay. Yes. Can you describe what your injuries were, sir? Objection, leading. 
Overruled, you may answer. Sí, no la puede contestar. Sí. Yes. What were they? ¿Qué fueron sus objections? Overruled. Pongo el pregunta en sino, anulada. La fibula. My fibula. Y ligamentos. And ligaments. Your fibula was broken? Objection, please. Fibula. Speculative. Overruled as to both. That's the witness may answer. Sí. Yes. And you had torn ligaments? Objection leading. Overruled. Did you say that in the question before? Sí. Yes. And were those both in the same leg? Objection leading. Sí. Sorry. Yes. Over, overruled. If we yeah, of course. just wait when there's an objection. Um, I'm overruling it. It's relevant. It's not leading. The witnesses' answers may stand. I mean, yeah, you overrule every objection. And the jury will disregard the additional commentary made by Mr. Brooks at this time. Judicial misconduct at his findings. And which leg was that, sir? Objection, accent, answer. Overruled. You may answer. El pie izquierdo. My left leg. Did you have to have surgery on that leg? No objection. Leading. Overruled. Sí. Yes. Just one? Dos. Two. That's not going to work either. Mr. Brooks, you Mr. are Brooks. advised to stop with the commentary. No, I'm going to say what I want you to You called this witness. I'm going to take a break right now and excuse the jury and this witness. All right. What you, what you doing is judicial misconduct. Judicial misconduct. But you don't want the jury to hear the truth. That's not fair to the jury. They have a right to hear everything. I'm not going to sit here and let you fix fix the trial because you don't want to tell the truth to the jury. Mr. Brooks, please stop. No, there ain't no please. You are nothing. being disruptive. Ain't you no are please. being disruptive. Yeah, you're always going to find some reason down. to say somebody's being disruptive because they want the truth to be out there. Man, quit it. You're supposed to be Mr. the judge. Mr. Brooks, I'm advising you that continued interruptions will result in you forfeiting your right to be okay, present in this court. Under what, under what law in fact can you do that? Illinois versus Allen, Okay, sir. but the fourth the fourth uh, option that you made up that's not even in the uh, law? Mr. Because Brooks. Because you can't do that. I need to make a By ruling. law, you can't do that. I need to make and you a know finding. you can't. All right, I'm going to um, excuse everyone. Mr. Brooks is being removed from the courtroom. He will continue in the neighboring courtroom. Uh, please make sure he has his objection signed and a pad of paper. So is that so that he can so is that holding me in contempt? Participate and I will make a ruling when I. And, uh, so are you holding me in contempt? Out. Is that civil or criminal?
see that. It's just BS, man. Y'all do the same thing every time, man. Every time she don't want to tell the truth to the jury, somebody got to get put out of the courtroom. That's contempt. That's contempt of court. I'm not. I'm not ignorant, man. I, 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 Jesus said, "If you took it, get that on so you can get these off." BS, can you just man. throw that thing forward. No. Um, Have some back up. Okay, slide back, sir. The <sighs> Take two steps back, just so he doesn't bump your leg. There we go. Okay, sir. Have some back. Thank you. What I'm saying, you can't. Can't just make up no law, make up a court position. I, I don't want them right there, man. You want them on the other side, over on the right? Where do you want? Them? Is that back to you? Yeah. Okay. Let's get them on. How am I? How am I so? How am I supposed to move and look at my paperwork with the boxes right here? Okay, well, let me take off the, the wrist so restraint, like and then you can put them. You want them on the other side? Where you want
you. Be seated. I need the state back. The record, Mr. Brooks has been removed to the other courtroom. The jury is not present and the witness that was on the stand is also not present in the courtroom. Actually, he is, Judge. Oh, all right, then we'll, we'll have him up. removed. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. I didn't see him sit seated all the way back behind a couple of individuals. Um, so this morning, uh, Mr. Brooks, prior to the court removing him, uh, had interrupted the court approximately 10 times prior to 10.19 a.m. Uh, then, of course, he was removed. This does not include the repeated commentary, either under his breath, but still audible for the court to hear, the jury to hear, and witnesses uh, to hear. Uh, related to a variety of topics, including subject matter, juris jurisdiction, misconduct by the court, disapproval uh, with the court's rulings. This very last witness was a witness called out of order at the request of Mr. Brooks. Um, as I know the attorneys are well aware, and certainly this court is well aware, under 906.11, the court shall exercise reasonable control over the mode and order of interrogating witnesses and presenting evidence so as to do all of the following. Make the interrogation and presentation effective for the ascertainment of truth, avoid needless consumption of time, protect witnesses from harassment or undue embarrassment. That's all under sub one. Sub two, scope of cross-examination. A witness may be cross-examined on any matter relevant to any issue in the case, including credibility. In the interest of justice, the judge may limit cross-examination with respect to matters not testified to on direct examination. I frankly haven't exercised my authority under that particular subsection, 
I have generally relied upon sub one. In addition, sub three says the following leading questions. Leading questions should not be used on the direct examination of a witness, except as may be necessary to develop the witness's testimony. Ordinarily, leading questions should be permitted on cross-examination. And during the cross-examination of this last witness, Mr. Brooks objected almost without fail, if not without fail, to every single question asked by the state on grounds of either leading or relevance. And then when the court overruled the objections, as time went on, it seemed to me that his commentary became much more audible. He was muttering under his breath and clearly showing disrespect for the court and the proceedings. Um, in my opinion, they're baseless objections. Uh, again, because this witness was brought into court on a subpoena that was from Mr. Brooks, served, of course, by the state to assist with him in that regard. Uh, but the state was well within its rights to ask leading questions. Um, it's this court's opinion that the repeated interruptions by way of baseless objections is to disrupt these proceedings, uh, disrupt the testimony of the witnesses, and in particular, Mr. Marquez. Um, this court has been abundantly patient this morning, noting the repeated interruptions by Mr. Brooks uh, starting right away at 8.31. There were a couple of interruptions continuing at 8.37. Uh, at 8.48, I think we had a total of five more at that point or so. Uh, at 8.49, and then of course at 10.19, this court removed him under its authority in Illinois versus Allen. Um, I also had warned him, or at least at times I would give the jury an admonishment, not really an admonishment, but an instruction, please disregard the commentary by Mr. Brooks. It's been very apparent that any time this jury is brought in or taken out, Mr. Brooks begins making statements that are misstatements of the law or generally his disagreement with whatever is going on at that particular time, accusing the court of either bias or misconduct, um, accusing this court of hiding information from this jury. Um, this court is not doing any such thing. Um, I will make a finding that based upon the conduct of Mr. Brooks that he has forfeited his right to be present during the cross-examination uh, and any redirect of Mr. Marquez. Um, Mr. Brooks's conduct has been anything but respectful today. It, again, it's been disruptive. Um, as this court was stepping off the bench, he made some type of statement about contempt. Are you finding me in contempt? This court is well aware that one of the permissible ways to handle um, a defendant who shows flagrant disregard in the courtroom for elementary standards of proper conduct um, is to find uh, a defendant in contempt. However, I'm not dealing with a defendant who is out of custody. I'm dealing with a defendant who is in custody on very serious charges, including if convicted facing uh, the possibility of life sentences without the possibility of extended supervision. It is my opinion that finding him in contempt uh, is not really a viable alternative to this court. Frankly, it would, in my opinion, um, it would serve to uh, give the defendant um, let me restate that. Um, in my opinion, if this court were to find Mr. Brooks in contempt, it would allow him to profit from his own wrongdoing because it would result in a delay of these proceedings. I would have to, of course, uh, make certain findings. One of the possibilities for contempt is to hold him in custody until such time as he's willing to abide by the rules. That is just not something this court is willing to even do because it would delay the proceedings. 
Um, I, I am aware that that is a option uh, identified by the Supreme Court in Illinois versus Allen, but I would remind the parties once again that Illinois versus Allen was decided in 1970. Um, certainly the technology that we have available in this courtroom was not something available to the parties in Illinois versus Allen. We have a very new state-of-the-art courthouse uh, that I am operating out of. I'm in uh, courtroom uh, 13. Next door is courtroom 20. These are just the room numbers that I'm referring to. Um, as you can see, uh, we have the ability to see and hear into that courtroom, and that courtroom has the ability to see and hear into ours. I will confirm with the bailiff and the clerk that the audio is working. I'm told that it is from my clerk. If I could also get verification uh, from the bailiffs who are in that courtroom. Um, but we have the ability, I have the ability, through that technology, uh, for Mr. Brooks to meaningfully participate. Uh, he does have, and it was provided with him when he was taken to that courtroom, the objection sign. I also instructed that he be given a pad of paper and a writing utensil so that he could write down his objections. Um, or if I feel it appropriate, I can uh, um, unmute and hear what his objection is, uh, but it's my belief that the use of my ability to mute and unmute will assist the proceedings so that it's orderly, uh, that it is free from disruption as best as I can control it under my authority under 90611 and my authority given to me and expressed by the U.S. Supreme Court in Illinois versus Allen. Um, although I'm making a finding that he's forfeited his right by his conduct to be present for the continued cross-examination and any redirect of Mr. Marquez, I'll also make an alternate finding uh, that uh, the technology that I've just described uh, provides the functional equivalent of Mr. Brooks being present uh, during this case. With that, I would like to... Uh, to have the jurors brought in. I'll have the witness brought back to the witness stand with the assistance of the interpreter, and the state can continue with its cross-exam of the witness called out of order, but on behalf of Mr. Brooks. And I am getting verification from the bailiff in the other courtroom through my bailiff here that the audio and video is working as it should. Would also like to point out that there are headphones at the table in front of Mr. Brooks should he choose to wear them. He has not worn them in quite some time. Um, previously made reference to needing it when he was in the other courtroom, so they are there and available. All right, would Mr. Marquez and Interpreter Ryan please take the stand and we'll have the jury brought out. And just for the record, I will certainly let Mr. Brooks know he can ask to come back in if, when he's willing to abide by the rules of decorum and courtesy. The record should reflect the jury is being brought back in. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. The record should reflect that Mr. Brooks is appearing from another courtroom. That should not affect the jury's verdict in any way. Um, the state may continue with its uh, cross-exam of this witness. The state would have nothing further. All right, Mr. Brooks, do you have any redirect for this witness? Mr. Brooks, do you have any further questions for Mr. Marquez? Mr. 
the record should reflect that Mr. Brooks is reading out of a book. He has not answered the question. I will ask one more time. Sir, do you have any further questions for Mr. Marquez? Am I unmuted? You are. You have been. What's going on? Do you have any redirect What's questions for on? Mr. Marquez? This is your opportunity to ask any follow-up questions uh, that you have for this witness. Say something. I, I'm trying to see if the headphones on. Someone say something from the other courtroom. Do you have any questions for Mr. Marquez at this time? It's your opportunity to ask follow up questions. The state indicated it did not have any additional questions. Nope, I don't got no follow up question. All right, thank you. Then, Mr. Marquez. You may step down. Thank you for being here today. All right, I need to excuse the jury momentarily. Um, please rise for the jury. All right, thank you. Be seated. Mr. Brooks, under Illinois versus Allen, which that case clearly tells me to do, that once lost, the right to be present can, of course, be reclaimed as soon as the defendant is willing to conduct himself consistently with the decorum and respect inherent in the concept, concept of courts and judicial proceedings. Uh, the court is going to continue with the uh, direct examination by the state of Detective Carpenter. Um, I would like you to come back to this courtroom. Um, are you willing to uh, conduct yourself consistently with the decorum and respect inherent in the concepts of courts and judicial proceedings? I didn't do anything to be found, held in contempt in the first place. So are you willing to abide by the rules of decorum and civility um, I would direct your attention to um, SCR Chapter 62, which has been provided to you previously. Um, does that say anything in there about me being held in contempt? Um, that does not, no. So why have, I, why have I been held in contempt? I didn't hold you in contempt, sir. You are simply in a different courtroom based upon your disruptive behavior. I'm giving My you the opportunity. has not been div disruptive. I've put my findings on the record, sir, and I, the record stands in that regard. Um, I'm giving you the corrected. opportunity, um, if you can, uh, indicate to this court that you will conduct yourself um, 
with courtesy and decorum. Are you willing so, to do that, sir? Is, is your honor willing to tell me why I've been held in contempt? I did not hold you in contempt, sir. I've already indicated that. Removing me from the courtroom is, is like holding me in contempt. Um, I didn't hold you in contempt. You were removed pursuant to the authority given to me by the United States Supreme Court in Illinois versus Allen, um, based on your disruptive behavior. My behavior wasn't disruptive, Your Honor. The record should be corrected in that. And as I recall you stating before, or not you stating, but us having a, a, a conversation about Illinois versus Allen for the record at one point, I could... I got the date in my notes that we had it where I, I said on the record that there were three three uh, options identified. And Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to have a debate with you on what the law means and whether you understand it or not. I'm simply asking you whether you are willing at this time to abide by the standards of courtesy and decorum that are outlined in SCR Chapter 62 and that are inherent uh, in the concept of courts and judicial proceedings, including um, making proper objections based upon the rules of evidence, based upon the rules of procedure, based upon the law, that you will not interrupt when you disagree with a ruling made by the court, uh, and that you will generally conduct yourself with dignity and decorum. But is, it not, my right? is it not my right to object? I'm going to ask Mr. Brooks one more time if he would like to come back to this courtroom and if he's willing to conduct himself um, with dignity, respect, and decorum. But for the record, I don't consent to being called that name, and I never stated that I wanted to be removed from the courtroom. All right, I'm going to mute uh, Mr. Brooks. He is clearly not answering my question. Um, and given his recent conduct, I'll indicate he continues to forfeit his right to be present based upon the prior disruptive uh, conduct. I have given him three opportunities uh, to answer the question, would you like to come back into the courtroom? And in other words, to reclaim his right to be present. Um, he has chosen not to answer that. I understand he disagrees with the characterization by this court of his conduct, but my ruling stands and my, the reasoning for my ruling stands. What I will advise uh, Mr. Brooks is um, once the jury is brought back out and once the witness is back on the stand, I will unmute him so that he can properly object. Um, and then I'll rule on, of course, any objections. Um, I certainly reserve my right to use the mute function of the audiovisual capabilities that I have should that right be abused. So with that, uh, why don't we have Detective Carpenter come on back to the stand. The jury is advised to come out. Uh, ruled that if Mr. Brooks wanted to come back into the courtroom, he could signal to a bailiff in the courtroom that he's in that he believes he can. Yes, thank you. He may absolutely signal to the bailiff and then they can get that information to me and I will promptly stop and we'll have him brought over. Thank you for that. Thanks. That invitation is an open invitation. Thank you. He wants to come back? All right. Um, the witness can stay here. Please have the jury remain. We'll have to clear the courtroom so he can be brought back in. We'll be in recess for that.
back on the record, and I've advised to have the jury brought out. I'm glad you're back here, sir. I am, sir, actually. Especially when I bring up subject matter jurisdiction. I've ruled on that, sir. I know, but it hasn't been proven for the record. If you disagree with my ruling, sir, you can file an appeal. It has to be proven on the record. It has yet to be proven on the record. I disagree, sir. Um, you can have it. I'll rise for the jury, please. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. All right, at this time, the state uh, may continue with its direct examination of Detective Carpenter. And let me know if you need the audio visual right away. Um, I will. Okay. Do you want it? It should be coming on. Sir, um, Regarding the interview, we've been playing a couple um, snippets of the interview with uh, Mr. Brooks from um, Exhibit 82 that took place on November 22nd of last year. I would now direct uh, the jury's attention to one hour, four minutes, 30 seconds. Objection, I don't consent to being called their name for the record. Noted. And I'd ask that it be played till one hour, 18 minutes, and two seconds. It's noted, but it's overruled. Go ahead. <coughs> Thank you. So, what's your buddy's name? Can we get that? If we gotta talk to him to verify you're on the up and up and she's on some BS? His name is Marquis. What's his last name? I don't know his last name. What about his phone number? Uh, four, six, seven, Oh, we hope if I have my freaking phone somewhere. Four, six, seven, uh, six, seven, eighty, five, thirty-one or thirty or something like that. One, one, four. Yes, sir. And he lives in Milwaukee. Yes, sir. And you guys came out here together. Yes. Okay, so he has. Well, like Milwaukee I said, the Stephanie was. She's a she's an older mixed lady, so she's not. You know, she, Who do you know in Waukesha other than her? Um, I know a guy named Terion. Um, I met Terion. Um, I don't know where he lives now. I met. I've been knowing him for maybe five, six years. I just know he stays in Waukesha. He comes down to Milwaukee a lot, and then he comes back up here. I don't. How old is he? I like 34, 35. 34. Yeah. Where is he? Maybe. Give me I know. Um, I know a lot of. I know a lot of females. Well, how many times have you been to Terry's house? Um, once in like 2018. Do you remember? It was like a, it was like an apartment. It wasn't a house though. Apartment? Yeah. Do you remember what was near it? Um, I think it was like right on the main street. What's the main street? There's a lot of like, streets. Like is whatever, it, is whatever it near street downtown. What, what would be considered downtown? Where all the bars and restaurants yeah. and shops are. District. Is Stephanie a place near downtown? Uh, a bunch of bars and a business district right near there? The only thing I can remember is a gas station, like a kitty quarter gas station. I think this street is like a one-way. Whatever street is right here is like a one-way. And it's a gas station like right here. Remember Oconomy Gas Station? It was a mobile uh, speedway quick trip hometown. Not, not a quick trip. Not a speedway, like a, the blue and white one. Blue and white. Any schools or parks nearby our house? Something like that? Anything you remember like that? 
trails. I know the, I know that park. I know that park is is by the uh, old girl's house. By whose house? Stephanie's. Yeah. Park. What? Trail I don't. Park? I don't know the name of the park, but it has like a little creeker. Some. It was something going on out there yesterday to where a lot of shit was blocked off. I don't, I don't, like I said, I don't know about Waukesha, I don't know, but it seemed like everybody was at that park kind of walking around that creek. Like a uh, playground type park or like a... Like a, uh, like a park, it's, it seemed like a little creek or something. Well, I don't know if it, you would say a creek. What would that be, but a river? Would that be a river? <laughs> Does Waukesha have a river? <sighs> well, I know it's just a small, it's a small body of water. It's like, how would I describe it? But there were barricades blocking some shit off here there? No, it looked like in that area. In that area? In that area, it looked like a bunch of shit was, like, blocked. You mm-hmm. couldn't go down certain streets or some shit. I, I don't know, but that park is close to the old girl's house where that's why I said, look, when our friend was like, you know, your baby mama trying to get in touch with you. And I'm like, was she, how, like, yeah, what's up? What's she telling you? What's what's going on? And she was just like, well, she said she got some money for you. And I was like, why would she tell somebody else? That's what I started thinking at first. Like, that's like, why is you tell? Because she, she'll tell me the same thing. Don't tell people our business. So then when she the put us in, when she merged us in, you out here, you out here, you out here. I'm like, man, yeah, but I'm like, what's up? Like, you. Yeah, I'm okay, cool. You going you gonna fit No, not staying out here like that. I'm watching the game and I'm gone. So she tell you where to meet or you tell her where to she meet? She told me where to meet. Okay. I told her I said it's a gas station right here. Mm-hmm. And she was like, Is it a park right there? I'm like, I don't know. Is it a park right here? They like, Yeah, there's a park right down here, blah blah blah. I'm like, Well just meet me over there, I'll get the money from you, give you a hug, give you a kiss and you know, I'll call you later or whatever. It wasn't supposed to be us hanging out, spending time together. It wasn't that. It wasn't supposed to be that. She got mad because I didn't want to do that. That's why I kind of figured, but like I said, I didn't see her drink. I'm not going to sit here and say, I saw her drink. I'm not going to lie on her. I didn't. But when she started acting like, yeah, you finna, that's when I kind of was like, she probably been drinking. She probably haven't just just stop drinking but you was drinking sometime today i know you was drinking sometime today i didn't tell her that i say yeah because she's acting too you know what i mean oh you just finna you just finna get oh you just think you finna get the money and leave and you just you must you must got some bitch waiting on you and blah 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 blind i'm like see this is why this is why i just should have just watched the game and left, dude. Like, all right. So the fuck, man. So you came out. How did you get out here again? My friend. What type of car did he drive? Oh man, it's like a Kia type of car. I don't know if it's a Kia, but it's a small four door car like that in that type of model. Okay. What color is it? Like tan. And was it just the two of you that rolled out together? Did anyone was, roll out from Milwaukee? With no, it was just us two. Two of us. He said he, he said this probably was going to be some chicks over here. You know, like I said, the Stephanie girl is an older, an older woman. She, you know, likes to party, drink, you know, watch the game. She cooks. Sure. Cool. Fuck it. Let's watch the game. Shit. I, I was only going to probably go to my mom's house and watch the game there and my mom has to go to work. So I was just gonna be sitting here like this. Fuck it, might as well go, you know what I'm saying? Did he offer and, to drive? And at you the same time, time sorry. cool, I can get the money from, you know, that she been holding for me. Yeah. Did he so offer cool. to drive? What, I mean, do you have your own car? Did he offer to no, drive? No, I, I don't. How did you guys come I don't own a vehicle. Don't own so, a vehicle? Nope. Do you have any car you can drive at all? No. I have license. Do you have a I do have license, but no, no vehicle. Don't ever use your niece's, nephew's, mom's car or anything like uh, that? My nephew doesn't have a vehicle. My niece is 14. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so 
What about your mom? No, my mom doesn't even know how to drive. She doesn't have a car, doesn't know how to drive? She doesn't know how to drive. Does she she never car? learned. Okay. Does she have a car that she lets you use at all? No. Does she have a car at all? Maybe that not that she lets you use. Does no. she have a car in her name at all? I think she did at one point. Does she right now? Not that I know of. Okay. I'm not I'm not gonna say no because I don't know. I honestly don't know. Me and my mom just we was kinda having family issues for a while, so we didn't talk for a while. The issues that didn't have nothing to do with, with this. It was between me and her. So, uh, we started back talking when I was in Georgia. So whatever she, whatever she had going on when I was on the West Coast, coming back to Milwaukee, I don't know. But I can tell you this. My mom is 60-some years old. She's never drove. She doesn't know how to drive. She doesn't even have a license. Okay. She catches the bus to work, which I don't like her doing because Milwaukee. Sure. She has to go. She works at Freighter, so she has to go. The way her bus route goes, she has to go away until like 92nd. Then some, some, somewhere she told me they don't even have a, a, a bus depot thing. Mm -hmm. So it's getting cold as shit, and it's dark out there, and she's just standing out there. And I was just like, damn, I don't want. So I'm like, you probably going to have to change your route to catch the bus from downtown Milwaukee on Wisconsin Street, downtown Milwaukee, and then go up because I don't like her. Sure. Yeah, I don't like her doing that. So you just argued a little bit and then you, you're saying you walked away yesterday. Yeah, I just told her I told her I'm like I'm not finna I'm not finna freaking do it was yeah. people out there. They they would they would tell you I did not put my hands on this woman, I did not push this woman, I did not choke this woman, people I did not like, kick this woman, I did not grab this woman, I did not do anything to this woman. People out there as in like just regular old civilians. Just regular like civilians. Just people regular that know you. Regular civilians. Did you people meet her by yourself? I met her by myself. No one from the house went with you? No one. And there was people walking up and down the street. Like I said, it was people out because it was daytime. So it wasn't like we was just yeah. in some secluded area where it was just me and her. Mm -hmm. you, it was it was people out there. And they, but anybody I, that knows you or knows Nobody her. that knows me. Mm -hmm. Nobody that knows me. I don't know if it was anybody around that knows her, but I know people were... Walking up and down the street, people were walking around that park. Sure. It was like basically we were out in public. Like if we was out in public, if something would have happened, people would have yo, what the hell? Like it, where was we gonna go to not be seen? Alright, so I might have missed this. You you touched on it. You were at the gas station or the park? I know the park's nearby. You met her at the no, gas, I'm saying the the gas station. No, I met her at the park. The gas park. station was by the area that we were in. The gas station is by that park. Yeah, I'm just clarifying. Yeah. Okay. Um, which car were you in when you met her at the I didn't park? meet her in the car, I just oh. I walked right over there. You walked I walked right, right over there to the park and she was standing like right wherever this entrance to this park is. Like I said, it was people everywhere. So yeah. anybody would see us standing out there. She was standing right there waiting for me. I walked up, gave her a hug, and she, I was like, and she was just like, well, my friend has my purse, so I don't have the money and all this. I'm like, so you had me come way out here? You know, like a power player or something? That's, that's basically was like, yeah, no, I, yeah. Okay. You know, you, you basically, you see how fast you caught on to that? And I was just like, you had me come way out here? You know, I ain't even supposed to be around you like that. You had me come way out here to meet you? For you to try to play and shit like this, I said, no, man, I'm fin I'm gone. Yeah, so I'm yeah. out. It was daylight when you met up with her. Was it still daylight? Pretty much when you walked away from her. Yeah, it was daylight the whole. This was oh. broad daylight. That's what I'm saying. Like people outside, everything going on, people walking around the park. I'm like, anybody could have saw. Anybody would have saw us talking. Anybody would have saw if anything happened. Mm -hmm. Anybody right. would have saw if. I did something to her, she did something to me, if I ran from the scene, if I did, did anybody would have seen it. Do you know how she got out here to meet you out here? Did she, she didn't say? She's apparently been staying out here. Okay. 
So we, this is what she told our mutual friend. I don't know if that's true. All right. I haven't talked to her and haven't seen her in like yeah. almost a month. That's fine. So I don't. I don't know. You said you said you you don't know where your phone is. Um, we're talking your cell phone, right? Yeah. You're not sure. Did you leave it? Do you do you keep that with you? Is that your phone that you have with you all the time? Because you seem. I don't know where it is. I don't have it. You seem confused. It's missing. Is that something? Yeah. That with well. You? Yeah. Like if you go somewhere, do you take your phone? Absolutely. My mom just got me that phone. It's my first ever iPhone. Okay. I don't know if she was using it first kind of thing, but she was just like, I got a surprise for you. No, I never had an iPhone. Hopefully we'll find it for you. And that's the number with the 610, if I had to call you after yeah. today, the 610, whatever. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. That's why I was asking him. I said, man, they find when I told them, I said, look, y'all, I'm reaching for my ID. That's why I said, how can y'all... Not find my flip flops or my phone. Mm -hmm. I had on some Green Bay Packer flip flops because it was game day. And we did stop at one hour eighteen minutes and two seconds, sir. With regard to this clip, you you asked the defendant about his his phone, correct? Yes, I did. Did you know where his phone was when you asked him if he lost it? Objection. You're Overrule, the witness may answer. The phone was found inside the vehicle, so uh, he didn't he didn't have it with him when he was what vehicle? taken into custody. The red Objection Ford Escape. Um, Overrule, the witness may answer. I'm sorry. The red Ford Escape. And in whose name was that car registered? Don Woods. And what relationship is Don Woods to the defendant? Objection, leading. Overruled. She is his mother. <coughs> did you question, you're questioning about the phones. What significance, if any, did that have to you? Or why did you ask him about the phone? Strike, strike the initial question. Why did you ask Mr. Brooks about the phone? Objection. I don't consent to being caught that night. The objection's overruled. <coughs> Go ahead, you may answer. One, you know, um, to verify his contact information, but two, um, one, if we were to find the phone, it would help us know whether it is his. Um, and if we were able to find a phone and we know it's his, um, knowing the phone number, including make and things of that nature can help um, be used in location services at a later time to further verify that the suspect was, Mr. Brooks, excuse me, was in Waukesha at the time when these incidents occurred. And again, at the time that you asked these questions, did you know that the phone had been located in the car or you did not have that information at this time? Um, sustained us to the form of the question. What information at the time that you asked Mr. Brooks about the phone did you have about it? Objection to the name. <clears throat> um, overruled. You may answer, sir. Uh, very little. At that point, I don't recall if I knew that the vehicle, that the phone was inside of his mother's vehicle. Okay. Thank you. Now directing you to... Um, the mark of one hour, 19 minutes and 20 seconds to one hour, 38 minutes and 30 seconds. Um, let's play that portion of the interview. After you talk to her, Darrell, um, where did you go? Do you have a, they found you, it was cold yesterday. 
you didn't have a jacket. Did you have a jacket with you? I didn't. I didn't initially have a jacket because, like I said, I was I was riding with somebody else. So I figured. But you didn't bring one in anticipation of a I, I didn't because I figured I'm going from the house right to wherever we're going. So I didn't. It wasn't. To me, it wasn't like I'm gonna hang out with, with y'all all night type of type of deal. We was just supposed to be watching the game, having a few cold ones, and then I was getting dropped back off home. So what happened, Darrell, where you ended up? So I know you say you're not familiar with the area. So At I'll, all. I'll lay this out for you. At so all. follow me for a minute. Um, you say you're kind of near this park. I got an idea in my head of where you're talking, based on my knowledge of the city. Um, it's right near Stephanie's where you're hanging around watching the game and Marcus is there. Um, you came out here with your phone because you take it with you. How did you end up at this guy's house? Now you said when you, you, you walked away from Erica, did she go the other way? I don't... You walked away... From what I remember, she just stood there. Okay, she, so you, she was just standing there like... Right, well, so whatever. you walked away and it was over. It was over. It was over. How did you end up at a guy's house asking to use his phone, which is blocks away from Stephanie's. Okay, I can tell you that based on my knowledge of the city, based on approximately where you're telling me it is, without your phone and your shoes. You understand where that's kind of weird? How did you get to be over there? What happened? Yeah, but what basically happened with that was when I got back over here by old girl house, I just said, because I don't really know Stephanie like that. It's my friend's friend or partner or whatever whatever the case may be. They was getting into it about pretty much the same thing that I was getting into it with Erica about. I was just like hey. him him who's him? Marcus. Okay. Him, her, and whoever else Stephanie. Was there anyone else there other than Yeah, at her house, yeah. Okay. The few girls that I didn't know. But they had already said it was gonna be people over here. Okay. So, all right, so I was pissed because I I feel like I just met up with her with my baby's mama. I just met up with her for absolutely nothing. You so you you tell me okay, you out here in Waukesha. I'm out here. Let's meet up. I got your money, and then I walk over there, and you don't have the money, or you do, or you don't. You just ain't gonna give it to me. However the case may be. So I'm just like okay, whatever. Well, hold on. So I when I get back, you're pissed, but. When I get back over there, I'm pissed. Okay. They was getting into it, and he like, man, come on, bro, we just finna go, we just finna go. And I'm like, what the fuck going on? Like, I just got into it with it. Now y'all into it. He like, man, this bitch tripping, whatever, let's go. I'm like, nah, nah, I, I uh, no. Nah. I'm like, I'm out, dog. And I just started Marcus walking. wanted to leave? He wanted to leave, but I ain't, I don't know what the fuck he was on. Doobie, Doobie, he probably didn't even get into it with old girl, but he out there like, man, let's just go, bro, let's just go, bro. How long have you known Marcus? I've known Marcus for years. Years. Okay. I'm going to be straight with you, because you've been asking me for that all along. That doesn't make sense. Listen to me, okay? Just listen to me. You go to this house. You leave. It was that wind was cold as hell. Not at first. Well, by the, by the time it was getting later in the day, I mean after the Packer game, you're talking three thirty, four o'clock. It, it was getting cold. I was outside for a while. Yeah, it was about like so. Later, yeah. By the time you're talking, it was getting cold. All right, Marcus is ready to leave because this bitch is being crazy. He's like, I'm out. You just went through the same experience from what you're telling us. You live in Milwaukee. I don't know what hold exactly on, happened on, with him. Though. I mean, I told you about me. Wait out. I know you don't know exactly what happened. But who are you going to trust more? Marcus, who you've known for years, or Stephanie? Why would you walk away, walk all the way down to where you did, leave your phone in the apartment, apparently. No, I didn't. Walk I didn't with your sandals. I didn't leave. I didn't leave. And go down to where you were and not take the ride back to Milwaukee. You follow what I'm saying? Right. Can you understand I don't, know if, to, I don't know if he left and went back to Milwaukee, though. I don't know if he did that. But how are you going to get back if you don't get in the car? 
I called an Uber. That's what I did. So what happened? How did you get all the way to where you went? Because there's all these businesses in between where you were and where you got to. How did you end up at a random house without your shoes and your phone girl? This is what I'm saying. I had my flip flops on. I had them. Okay. <laughs> I just said that. Where did they go? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if when they slam me down, they just never. I don't know. I'm not throwing two doors, not not just the one. So you had your flip flops. I on had my Green Bay Packer flip flops on. Yes. Green Bay Packer. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I did. I wasn't just walking around with no shoes. That didn't happen until after the fact. That's what I'm trying to say. Like. So I guess another question that I would have for you is if you had your phone too, correct? Yeah. Okay, you didn't leave it at the apartment. No. That's why I was telling you it should have been on the grass. Remember, right. I, I described the phone to you. I said it's black. It has a crack screen. Yep. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Why are you asking other people to use their phones? Why is that guy like My you? phone was dead. Okay. When did it die? I have no idea. Okay. And I didn't have a charger. But you used it for the three-way call. And I used his phone for the three-way call. Okay. Like I said, we got a mutual friend named Michelle. Me, me and Erica do. I've known Michelle just as long as I've known Erica. She was the one that was telling me what's going on with you and your baby mama. Y'all not talking because she's trying to get in touch with you. I said, yeah, I know. I know she's probably trying to get in touch with me. Well, I'm going to merge y'all. That's how I end up talking to her and telling her I'll, I'll you know, I walk over and meet you to get the money or whatever, mm -hmm. get you hug, get you kiss, whatever. I had my flip flops on then. I wasn't like I said. I wasn't just because the the way is he was making it seem like I was just running around with no shoes to begin with. Right. It's like no. I mean, it was pretty cold. You didn't have a jacket or sweat. Well, I didn't have a jacket to begin with. Okay. I didn't have a jacket to begin with, but I'm saying my shoes. I I had flip flops. But you had a jacket before. First I half. never had a jacket. Okay. I had flip flops. Right. Green Bay Packers flip flops. Flip -flops. Okay. Right, because I didn't feel like I was going to be like, where I'm not going to be outside. Well, mm -hmm. I'm thinking I'm not going to be outside. If I'm just going from a car to a house, there's no reason for me to have a coat on. or At least that's how I'm thinking. I always do that. That's just like if I had a car and I know I'm going to go somewhere and I'm like, I'm just going from here to here. Well, it's no reason for me to just get all bundled up and do all this and that. It's when no you, reason. Were there me. still a bunch of people out when you left? When you left her house? It was, it was still. It was still, still daytime. Okay. It you was said still there were a bunch time. of people when you were talking to Erica. There were still a bunch of people when you left Stephanie's. When I was no, 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 I wasn't talking. When you left Stephanie's. It was, it was still, still daytime. daytime. It was still daytime. Yes. Okay. Were there still a lot of people out? It was still. Like it was still people out. Okay. It was still people out. Um, not a lot in that area. By the park, it was a lot of people out. Okay. Like I said, it looked like something was, I don't know what the hell. <laughs> but it was a lot of people out. And it was, like I said, it was people, it was older couples walking down the street. It was younger people walking down the street. People it was were like an event or something was going on? I, I don't know, but it kind of seemed like it was a lot, like it was something going on to where it was vibrant. Because it was a lot of people everywhere. Walking everywhere. up and down the street. Everywhere. It's people, 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 people. That's why I'm saying, like, if I got into a fight with her right there, it would be so impossible for somebody to not be like, hey, this guy's fighting this chick or whatever the case may be. Like, it, how could somebody not see something? How long was it be between leaving Stephanie's and those cops yelling at you at the door of that guy's house? Was it dark when they yelled at you? Yeah, by the time they came, it was dark. Okay. But we had been sitting out there. We had been sitting out there for a minute, me, me and the guy. We were sitting right there on the porch. We were just sitting there. To find how long? Uh, estimate. Uh, maybe all, maybe 20, 30 minutes, maybe. It wasn't long, long, but it was, it was long enough for like, cause like I said, he let me use his phone. We sat on the porch. We were sitting right there, just like this, just sitting on the porch. 
Well, I caught called me an Uber. I called the Uber. I said, look, man, I, I let him know. I said, look, I ain't trying to rob you or nothing like that. Because when I knocked on the door, he kind of was like, whoa. I'm like, look, I don't got no weapons. I'm not trying to break in your house. I'm not trying to rob you. Nothing like that, dog. I just need to call an Uber. That's it. You, I'm not, you know, he was just like, okay. I come out. Boom. I, yo, I need an Uber to, yo, what's your address? He told me the address. 